Good morning, good morning guys. Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to another video. We're back in the garage with the 135. I've been working on this car a lot lately, but I do have to admit, it's been a lot of fun. So today's little DIY or modification is a relatively easy one and also I'm finding out it's a pretty popular one in the N54 community. Let me show you guys what we're getting into. All right, so here we are with the 135 getting into that 1M conversion. One of the biggest things to me that sticks out that was always kind of strange from the beginning of owning this car was the way that this cowl was designed. There's like this big shelf up here that covers up a good quarter of the engine on the backside. It also makes working back here a little bit more difficult. So the first thing I did was was actually look up how to convert this to like an E90 or E92 M3 cowl. There is a way to do that. You can actually order the OEM parts, but I think it comes out to like $650 with all the parts included. In my opinion, that's a little bit much to be spending on just like a cowl modification. So I did a little more digging and I found out a lot of guys actually just modify their factory 135 or N54 335 cowls and basically just recess this piece back here, remove this center section, which does a couple of things. One. It just looks a lot better, cleans it up a lot more in my opinion, and then two, it makes it a lot easier to work back there, you know, for things like manifold, spark plugs. So I'm gonna do the best I can today to do a very clean DIY on this and just make it as good as possible. The only thing I am waiting on is the actual seal strip. You gotta buy a longer one because now this will have to travel all the way back here. So that is one thing that I may not have in this video, but I will have it in the future. Another thing I wanted to show you guys is I also have the BMS cowl filters already on the car. I installed these like almost immediately when I bought the car but I'll have them linked down below they make them in a couple of different colors I just went for black keeping it as OEM as possible so yeah those are a great addition as well you're gonna see some things are happening over here <laughs> I'm kind of moving things around I'm gonna be replumbing a lot of stuff I also ordered this expansion tank set up for coolant however I haven't gone full into the install yet because I have some other things that are happening I need to make sure that all this fits I'll need to relocate my power steering reservoir as well so this will all be changing this is just temporary I'm just kind of locking things up to see what fits, but we will get into that in a future video. I like to update you guys as much as possible with all the stuff that I'm doing, but off camera, I actually went ahead and fixed all of the gaps on my bumper to fender setup. So originally when I installed the front bumper and the 1M fenders and all that stuff, I had some pretty wicked gaps happening, like right between here, and I figured out exactly how to close those and get them perfect and flush. It looks really, really good now. Everything just fits overall a lot better. So I actually removed all of the stuff on the front, the front end, and then I also loosened up the entire headlight bracket. And I made a couple of little modifications right here. You can see I actually dremeled out the lip right here and I also dremeled out the hole so it allowed me to push the entire headlight in a bit further. Basically the bracket is what is going to determine how flush this can fit up here. So you really need to make sure that that bracket is all the way up and in to fit as good as possible. This came down to a couple of things. There's the two bolts right here on the headlight bracket. I had to move that up as far as I possibly could and then obviously dremel this out so I could push it in further. And I tightened everything down while I was holding it up against the fender and it just fit so much better. Also, I was missing a bolt in here and I realized that there's actually a little plastic rivet piece that I had ordered and it goes right here in the fender and there should be like an eight mil that goes into there. I didn't have that in before. And all of those combined made a really, really big difference. To show you guys what I mean by that plastic piece that was in the fender, it looks like these and I ordered them from BMW, just got a bunch of them and they basically just pop right into the fender and then you just send a eight mil into it and it locks that into place. So that made a big difference. And then also lastly, I installed the auxiliary 1M radiator. Basically everything bolted directly up. Now from factory, you do want to run some sort of bracket. However, I sort of just made my own mounting points and bracket and it worked out perfectly. You can see the auxiliary radiator is hooked up right here. It actually bolts right up to the frame of the car, but I don't have it actually plumbed yet. I'm waiting on a couple of hoses to be able to run this auxiliary radiator. So I'm just learning as I go along and in installing things that like there's just more and more stuff that you need to order from BMW to make things actually fit properly. Kind of a 
process, but in the end, I think it's gonna be really worth it because we're doing it like the right way, you know? So there's gonna be a lot more stuff that I have to order in the future. I'm just kind of knocking things off my list one by one while we wait for the rear flares to show up. But yeah, if you wanted to do like the E9X cowl modification or like real OEM conversion, it's gonna be a lot more expensive. I think it came out to like $650, $700 just to get all of the parts. And in my opinion, just a little bit unnecessary to spend $700 just to change a cowl when really you can do this and I think it actually looks better. All right, so first things first, we're gonna go ahead and remove the entire cowl. It's pretty easy. You have these two plastic pieces right here. You have a plug right here that you need to undo. These just twist and then you can flip this whole thing up. Same thing with that side. And this entire cowl piece comes out. All right, so we got it off. This thing is like surprisingly heavy. Not sure what it's made out of. I guess just plastic, but it feels like it's enforced or something. We gotta pull off our sensor as well right here. One thing about mine is I'm actually missing a seal, so I gotta order that. There should be like a little gasket seal that goes across here. I'm gonna have to find the part number on that and order it. Definitely don't wanna leave that off. That's how you get water in the back of your engine or on top of your engine cover. I'm gonna go ahead and pull this sensor off real quick. So basically when doing this, what we wanna keep in mind is that we want to be able to reuse a rubber seal along here. But basically we just want to eliminate this top portion. So I think the way to do this is to probably cut like right around the top of this ridge. And then once we get to here, there's this faint line that you can see in the plastic. It's kind of hard to tell on camera. You can really see it over here. But we'll just follow that line across and then cut up here. We don't wanna cut off these tabs, obviously, so we're gonna leave that there and then cut straight up. This side doesn't have that tab, however, I'll still cut like right there and then go up. That way the trim seal will be even all the way around and we'll still have a lip over here in order to catch it and go across right there. And up. Also when doing this, you wanna keep in mind that water likes to pool in through here. You see there's a little lift. When water comes down the cowl, it actually makes its way into here. Now part of the reason that we're leaving this little lip and we're gonna put a rubber gasket is so the water doesn't just simply fall off on top of the engine. This way with a little lip and the rubber seals, the water still has places to go and to drain out in the proper locations. So that's kind of why I recommend just leaving a little bit of a lip here along the line and just keeping it as clean as possible you'll be able to keep all of your seals and you won't have to run into any water issues. All right, so I just did some rough measuring and I think that this is gonna work pretty well. I am gonna try and round that off right there so it's not like a harsh corner. That way the seals will fit better. And then following it along here, I also did just a little line above it to where I'm gonna try and round it off again so the seals fit better. And then same thing over here, just a bit of a round off, make it fit better. And then we'll cut right before this tab right there. So this should work out pretty good. We're gonna go ahead and use a Dremel for this. I'm hoping that the Dremel will work because this thing's, it feels like a very thick piece of plastic. We'll see if it makes it through it. that looks pretty good it's like OEM factory man not too bad not too bad at all so these I'll just have to order a longer piece so I can finish off this edge and then this side and then we'll be all good but yeah this looks really good and I think it's gonna look a lot better in the engine bay pretty impressive how heavy this thing was with all that extra plastic it's really heavy plastic got some other things that I'm gonna be doing as well in terms of just upgrading stuff in here you guys will see that in the future but immediately what you'll be able to see is we can now work in the back we can get back here much easier when we're doing uh, other modifications just changing things around it's gonna be a lot easier to work on the car so let's go ahead and put this in and see how it looks oh 
All right, considering this is basically free compared to the $700 OEM upgrade, I think this is the way to go. It looks a lot better. And look at how everything is now accessible back here. We're not gonna have any problem getting this off. Yeah, this is this is most definitely the way to go. Super clean. Lots of stuff over here is going to be changing. This is my next project. I gotta start working on this and mocking things up and see what's gonna fit and see what's not gonna fit. You know, when we originally put this engine in, we sort of just plumbed things however best we could and made them work. But yeah, this location is trash back here for the coolant reservoir. I'm really hoping that I can keep this reservoir, the new one that I got. This is from Turner Motorsports. It's made for a 335, but it bolts right up to the factory locations. Looks really good. It also has a bracket for the power steering reservoir, which is nice. So that just makes everything fit so much better. Really hoping that I can retain that with my new intake manifold, but we'll see. I might have to adjust some things. I might have to make some custom brackets. We'll see. We'll see. My strut braces are just destroyed. They look horrible, but I got something coming for those as well. Uh, I'm going to be doing a pretty cool little DIY retrofit. All right, guys. So there you go. Super easy, clean DIY on the cowl setup. If you were doing this, it's probably only going to take about an hour. I recommend getting a grinder though. The Dremel is just not quite strong enough to eat through that really thick plastic. But I want to thank you guys for watching the video. Hopefully this video brought some value to you and helped you out if you're looking to do this modification. As always, I'll have all of my 1M conversion parts linked down below in a Google Sheet. Go ahead and check that out if you're interested in converting your 135 to a 1M. But that is going to wrap up this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.